All right, first of all, uh, uh, what an awesome night for South Carolina football. Um, uh, what a great weekend. I mean, starting with uh, Coach Staley and the women's basketball team in that parade on Wednesday, and, and then uh, with all of our sports that we've had here on campus, I guess baseball ended up having a fantastic win this afternoon and, and uh, took the series, I guess, from Ole Miss, correct? So heck of a job, and congrats to Coach Kingston and, and his staff and, and all the other sports that were competing this weekend. And then what an environment uh, out here. Uh, tonight, we just talked about in the locker room. I mean, that was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And um, thanks to our fans, I mean, it was awesome. That, that pregame walk that we had, I mean, I know some of you guys saw it and some of you guys may have been at baseball and we talked about it on Twitter, but there's college football programs across the country that would die to have a walk like that for a regular season game. And we had that kind of turnout for our pregame walk for a spring scrimmage in April. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and we got the greatest fans in, in the nation, and they showed that tonight. We had 32 recruits here tonight that have scholarship offers from the University of South Carolina. So we had a bunch of prospects here. Um, but 32 of them we have offered a scholarship to, and we want them to come play football here at South Carolina. Uh, so the statement that we made tonight about what this football program is about and what this university is about uh, was an awesome, awesome, awesome statement. So thanks to our fans. Uh, for that, you know, I told Spencer when we started that walk, I said, you're about to see a pregame walk like you've never seen. And um, I no disrespect to the pregame walk at Oklahoma, but it's not that. And uh, it was it was awesome. So great weekend for Gamecock Athletics. Thanks to, you know, Coach Tanner and, and Chance Miller and our administration for the idea of the spring game at, at night. Uh, it obviously was awesome and uh, couldn't have turned out better. Weather ended up clearing up and being a great night for, for football. So certainly appreciative of their leadership of our athletic department uh, as well. Uh, congrats to our award winners that we, we recognized at halftime. I'm really proud of those guys and the springs that, that they had as well. And then overall, I mean, just a really good night on the field as well. Um, you know, efficient, very few penalties until that very last drive. I think we had more penalties on that last drive than we had probably the whole game combined, but it was a, it was a clean game. Uh, as well. Probably the most disappointing thing was our punt team when we went out there uh, halfway through the second quarter. I mean, we got more punts blocked in, in, in five minutes than we did in the entire spring. Uh, so that's certainly something that we have to address. And, and uh, good thing that wasn't on TV since uh, opposing teams can see how to block punts against us since we gave up three um, on national television. So I'm sure we I'm sure we won't see those rushes uh, at any point this season, but that's disappointing because we've really been good uh, on special teams all spring. So I have I can't wait to look at the tape of that to see what happened. But I mean, that was our starting punt team that we had out there and, and backups, and um, you know we got to be better there. You don't get a second down or third down on special teams; you get one shot, and you win and lose football games on special teams. And we would have lost games uh, based on the way we protected the punter tonight. But I uh, was proud of the offense; thought they did some really good things. Proud of the defense. Thought they did some really good things. Um, you know, it's a great competitive game that did some such got to work, didn't mean it necessarily for it to happen, but got some great situational work there at the end of the game. Uh, what we call get the ball back, four minute offense, two minute offense. Saw all that, and it was great to get some work for our players doing that as well. Uh, Alex Boogie Huntley is still mad at me and has not let me forget it. He swears he had a sack on that touchdown drive right before the half um, that Spencer scored on that pretty much ended up being the difference in the game. Uh, so he is he he's still talking about it in the post game locker room. So we'll have to go back and check the tape of that. But it was a great spring. I just told the players in the locker room I absolutely love coaching this team. They're a lot of fun. They love to work. They love to compete. Uh, tonight was a reward for them and their all their hard work this spring. And we've got a lot of work to do going forward as well this summer. We got exams coming up. We got to have a great finish uh, in the classroom. We got the last week of classes coming up and then exams. So we certainly need to finish on a strong note uh, academically. Our guys, will, I'll be meeting with every single player on the team starting Monday morning at 7 a.m. I think is my first meeting. I'll meet with every single guy. We'll talk about their roles and where they are coming out of spring practice and, and what the 2022 season looks like uh, for them. And then they'll get a little bit of time off in May and uh, be a great break for them physically and mentally to get away from here for a little bit. And then they'll be right back after Memorial Day in June to start summer school. So with that, any questions you guys have? Shane, from an overall offensive uh, look, you know, how much of the playbook would you say you guys used tonight and how do you think Spencer played? 
I thought Spencer did well. Um, you know, operated. We we had the play clocks going and and uh, really didn't have any personnel issues or play clock issues. We're pretty clean from that standpoint. Um, certainly, we weren't showing everything, but it wasn't like we were uh, limiting a whole lot either. You know, I've been there was nothing that we said offensively that we weren't going to do like formation wise or personnel groupings. There was nothing that I told Clayton, hey, don't don't blitz us or don't do this. I mean, he could run whatever he wanted. And there's certainly things that he didn't show defensively, some packages that we've used in the past and, and some new things we have. And certainly there's some things offensively that we didn't do a, a ton of. But, you know, it was it was wide open if you wanted it to be. But I thought Spencer thought Spencer did did a uh, did a good job, made some throws and, and had some receivers and tight ends and running backs make some catches for him too. Shane, obviously we didn't have the opportunity to, to see Marshawn this spring in the, in the 14 practices that you have, but some of the videos that did come out, it looked like he showed that explosiveness and it yeah. looked like he showed that tonight. You know, What can you say just about his mental toughness, trying to come back from that injury, and how pleased does that make you feel, especially heading into fall camp now? Yeah, really fired up about him and, and uh, the spring that he's had. Obviously, highly recruited coming out of high school, 2020 gets injured. He may tell you that he was healthy and 100% last year. I don't think so. I mean, he, to me, never looked like the Marshawn, 100% Marshawn. But this spring, he's been on a uh, – I've, I've said it before to you guys, He's he's been on a mission and very purposeful about the way that he's worked since he came back in January. Um, and I think he looks faster. I think he looks more explosive. Um, you know, we're continuing to emphasize to him what a load he is and how hard he is to tackle. Uh, and continuing to get north south and 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 run through people as well, but he's worked on his route running. He's worked on his pass catching. Thought he's had a really good spring, and you know, and he was out there tonight. The way we broke up the teams, he was out there with that second team offensive line. But you know, he wouldn't never complain. He just went out there and just ran the football. That was good to see. You mentioned just the recruiting aspect of it. What can this atmosphere, this kind of weekend, do for you in terms of recruiting and getting this the twenty three class off on the right? Yeah, um, can't put it in the words. Uh, just the so many, and, and I've told you guys this was practice number fifteen. I mean, every single practice one through fourteen, we had big time football prospects at our practice here visiting. And then to have so many come together tonight from so many different areas, the best players in South Carolina, the best players in surrounding areas. Um, and it's a who's who of people that we're recruiting here right now, which was which is awesome. And to be able to put a statement like that out there on the field and for for those guys to be able to see, you know, what this place is about. But, you know, more importantly to see the people that we have here as well. Um, anytime you can get people get players on, on our campus, it's a great thing and, and we certainly uh uh, have been able, we're able to do that tonight, and there's a lot of excitement and a lot of energy about South Carolina football. We tell recruits all the time that there's a great time to be coming into this program. I can't tell you how many people tell me every single week they've never been more excited about South Carolina football uh, than what they are right now, and and uh, I think that's very evident with the environment tonight and with the amount of prospects that are that are here. Shane, you mentioned uh, uh, Spencer's play tonight. I guess just I know we saw at least one design run and, and saw him able to stretch plays a little bit. I know that's not necessarily his MO 100% of the time, but to see him be able to move around a little bit, what did you kind of see from him on that front? And then I guess from Luke, just seeing him full go in, in a setting like that, what did yeah. you kind of like from him? Um, as far as Spencer, I mean, Spencer to me doesn't get enough credit for how athletic he is. Um, you know, and he they didn't run him at Oklahoma last year like, you know, they did with Jalen Hurts previously and things like that. But Spencer's athletic enough where he can he's got he can run and um he'll uh he, he's not gonna be a running quarterback, but certainly he's he's can be a threat, you know, running the football. So pleased with him from that standpoint. And uh and then Luke, I mean what a what a story that is. I mean, for everything that he's been through, for him to, you know, break his foot for the second time against Vanderbilt last season in October and then to be out there right now and he's been full go all spring and to be running and throwing and doing the things that he's doing right now uh he's a stud and uh really appreciate Luke and and that quarterback's room is in a really good place right now you got you know two young guys with Colton and Braden and then you know uh, Luke is still young but kind of the veteran of the group but Spencer has been great for all those guys and Luke has been great for Spencer as well. You know, it's a great, you know, connection in there and 
And then to have Zeb, you know, back in there as well with those guys, it's a, it's a good group and, and proud of those guys and how they've handled themselves this spring. Shane, two quick ones for you. Uh, obviously, the just the importance of having uh, two consistent options out wide for your quarterback to throw to and kind of how Antoine fits into that role, being able to see him kind of in a, in a live action situation, uh, just kind of what were your takeaways from, from Juice and, and then two, just – Overall, the spring that Cam Smith has had, uh, how invaluable has it been uh, for him and his career and future as a football player? Yeah, no. Um, Juice has had a great spring. He's gotten more and more confident each practice. Uh, he's got a, a he's got an unbelievable competitive spirit about himself, and um, he just he loves to work. I mean, I'm, players didn't have to be over here today till I think three o'clock is when they had to be in the building for a meal that we fed them and. He, I walked in the offensive staff room at like 1 p.m. and he was in there with Sat going through the calls for tonight. You know, um, two hours before he had to be over here. It's it's very important to him and and to have him on the outside and that whole receiving group has improved. I mean, Josh Van is re- leading returning receiver. Uh, what Xavier Leggett has done this spring is amazing. He is a weapon for us. Um, um, to carry on coming back, we talked about Juice. Uh, Amari and Brown uh, got an award out there tonight. I mean, he's had a he's had a great spring. He really has. I mean, he's 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 been the most probably consistent receiver we've had all spring. Trey Atkins caught two touchdown passes last week in the scrimmage. So I really like that receiver group. It continues to get better. And and uh, and as far as Cam goes, he's been dynamite this spring. You know, he he um, he was a corner last year, and then David Spalding and Carlin's Patel were our two nickels so the db that's if we have five dbs he's gonna be the fifth one and uh, the nickel would be and typically covering the receiver in the slot and cam was always on the outside last year but with david being out and carlin's having graduated we moved cam into that nickel position and after 15 practices it's like, it's like oh my god like <laughs> why didn't we do this before i mean he's just Y'all know Cam. Cam's got a great personality. I think Cam sometimes got bored out there on the outside, but now he's in the slot at nickel and he's around the action every single play. I mean, he is. There's a reason he was named the most outstanding defensive player of the spring tonight by our staff, along with Zach Pickens, because that's kind of the spring that he's had. Um, you know, so to, to have that position flexibility where he can play nickel, but he could also go back on the outside. Uh, proud of Cam. He's come a long way uh, on and off the field and, and excited to see how he continues to progress going into the season. I don't know if you address the team as a whole again before uh, summer or whenever, but what, do you have like an overarching message or theme or something you got want the guys to kind of take into this next chapter of the year? Yeah, we'll meet again on, uh, like I said, we'll do the, I'll start the individual meetings with them on Monday and, and we, we have a team meeting on Wednesday morning, uh, kind of, um, you know, as they get into exams, just recapping the spring and, and getting organized going forward. But, you know, I told them in the locker room and we told, I, you know, we'll tell them again on the next time we meet as a team. One, just I love coaching them. I mean, I love the way they work. And we have not had a practice all spring where you walk off the field and say, man, we didn't, we didn't, we wasted today or we didn't get better. I mean, they, they work. And if anything, like they, I think I've told you guys before, I mean, they, they get mad at me when I don't let them go full speed and tackle live to the ground every single practice. I mean, they just, if anything, we got to like tell them to slow down and pull back a little bit. So I told them in the locker room, I love coaching them. I love the way they work. I told them that we've gotten off to a great start in 2022 with the work we've put in in the weight room in January, February, and March, and then what we've done in spring practice. But we got a lot of work, you know, that we have to do as well. And we need to have a great, great summer. Uh, and as we go into the season, but we've we've um, we certainly have gotten better since January, and now we got to take another big step as we go into the summer and then preseason camp. Shane, how are you? I am good. How are you? Good, thank you. Um, so the announcement got your Clemson sidekick here tonight. Huh? I know. So, <laughs> got the enemy infiltrating us, Steve. <laughs> we're we're buddies. We're buddies. <laughs> Ladies, guys, get together. Um, so with uh, crowd attendance, we have twenty thousand six hundred seventy-one. Now, there's a lot of social media chatter right now. They're saying that they think the number was larger. So I wanted to ask you, from your standpoint, do you think there were more than twenty thousand people out there? One tonight? billion percent. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who said that you. I don't know who said 20,000. There was more than 20,000 in there. I can promise you that. 
Thank you. You're welcome. 20,000. Come on, Steve. Shana, just some housekeeping. I didn't see a Jamal Weiss or Rico Powers out there. What's their status? Uh, they are not currently with the program. Uh, we'll address that as we get into the season. Shane, I know you hadn't seen the film yet, though, but how do you think the, your new additions played in the game tonight? And did you get a chance to see any of the reactions to the Gamecock walk or 2001 or anything? Yeah, um, you know, every, all the players certainly uh, were talking about the walk when we got into the locker room once we got over here. Uh, 2001, I mean, I can tell you what the reaction was with 2001. I mean, they love it. I mean, if as many times as you stand in that tunnel and hear 2001 played and run out, that will never get old and, and still gives me chills every time that I'm a part of it. And then to be able to come onto the field and have such a large contingent of former players down there in the end zone for our players to go down to and connect with, that was pretty cool uh, as well. Uh, so I, I, I know we had great reactions uh, from, from that standpoint. And then what was the first part about the film? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought they did a great job. You know, you saw, um, one, a lot of the freshmen that just got here that graduated high school early. Uh, I saw them make some plays out there. A lot of our new arrivals, uh, Braden Davis at quarterback, Anthony Rose at defensive back, and then some of the transfers uh, as well, you know, all showed up. Juice Wells, Lavoisier Carroll had some nice carries. Christian Bill Smith had a nice carry. Uh, Terrell Dawkins on the edge looked fast and physical. Uh, Spencer, you know, we've talked about that uh, already. Even uh, DJ Twitty, you know, walk-on transfer from East Tennessee. I mean, he was a load out there uh, carrying the ball tonight. So it was uh, 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 Devonnie Reed, you know, has had a really good spring. So we really like, like last year when we brought in all these transfers, we didn't miss on any of them. They all played major meaningful roles for us last season and feel confident saying the same thing this year with this group. We uh, we haven't missed on any of them, and they're all going to have, you know, uh, very impactful roles on our team this upcoming season. Shane, I know you said you were going to be meeting with the players individually and kind of talking to them about where they're at as far as spring and then heading into the fall. We had four players out there from the Sumter area. I don't know if you'd be able to maybe talk a little bit about their progress through the spring and kind of what you see for them in the future. Yeah. Uh, Talking about Jakeem Green, O.D. Fortune, Nate harris Wainick, and who's our fourth one? Tyreek Johnson. Tyreek Johnson. I always forget he's, from, he's over there at Sumter. They've all had great – talking about Tyreek first – I think he's been awesome. I mean, an older guy that hasn't had the career probably in his mind that uh, he wanted. And we talked after the season in January that, look, like, you need to step up. You know, it's time. You've been here long enough. And, and he's had a really, really, really – a uh, productive spring. He's improved as a pass rusher. Uh, Od, you know, love what um, love what he's about. Uh, he's got size and athleticism. Think he's had a good spring and has made a lot of plays for us as well. Uh, Nate Harris Wainick has done a nice job in our program. Been through a lot of you know some tough things off the field here recently with his family. Thinking of them over in Sumter, uh, but you know like what Nate's about. And, and then Jakeem Green, you know he. He came in, transferred from Nebraska last year, and, and didn't uh, play as meaningful a role as he probably anticipated. But he's improved and, and uh, gotten better this spring. So we're certainly, uh, anytime we can get uh, guys from Sumter on our on our team, we uh, we are all for it and, and actively trying to add more uh, to our team as well. And yep, yeah, ex absolutely. Kyle Leak's gonna. Uh, excited about Kyle Leak's future here in our program, and got another one that's a that's over there right now that we're still trying to get as well. <laughs> hey Shane, I know this time last year you guys didn't necessarily have the healthy bodies to put on a full scrimmage like this, and I know you were looking forward to that tonight. I'm curious, now that it's over, you're looking back on it. What do you think that you got out of this? practice that you weren't able to get last year uh probably just being able to develop depth you know last year uh I've, we've talked about it before i mean last year our second team corner uh second team defensive back was a was a walk-on that we had brought out in a walk-on tryout 
two months earlier that played receiver when he got here. So we just didn't have any depth on defense. And, and you know, we got down there to the very last drive tonight, and those guys that were in there, a lot of them are guys that are going to be playing on Saturdays for us this fall. So the, really the biggest thing is just being able to develop the, the uh, you know what your starting group can be, just being able to really get some quality work with, with backups and, and develop depth. And when we came out of last spring, we – we had a general idea, but there was also a lot of guys that we were going to be adding. Carlin's Patel, for example, that didn't even go through spring practice that we knew were coming, but we didn't get a chance to see in the spring. So it's like night and day from that standpoint. Hi, Shane. Um, Chad Terrell obviously scored um, a touchdown tonight. Uh, considering his story, six-year senior, what, what strikes you about him? Um, what can you say about him? He's awesome. Uh, he, I just told the team in the locker room in there. I mean, what a, what an unselfish guy he is. You know, he's is it fifth year, sixth year, sixth year. So last year was his fifth year in the program. He wasn't playing. He was on the scout team in his fifth year. A lot of guys would have walked away. Um, he and I, like Tyreek, we talked before spring practice. You need to step up. You know, it's time. And, uh, you know, and he has. So he comes in, he's been a receiver his entire career. We don't have a lot of tight ends right now because of injuries and guys not here. So he volunteers. We talk him into becoming a tight end for spring practice, catches a touchdown pass out there tonight, uh, and has put himself in a position to play, you know, this fall. Just really proud of Chad. He's so – he's unselfish. I mean, you think about it. Six year in the program, you've been a receiver for five years, and then you're asked all of a sudden to come in here and start blocking Jordan Birch and Jordan Strawn and all the defensive ends and the things that tight ends do. I mean, it's amazing. And then every single night – here's what I love about him is we practice in the mornings, as you guys know. Every single night, the night before practice, you can look out on our practice fields at 5, 6 o'clock at night, and he's out there by himself. He's got, like, the calls for the next day, and he's out there just literally, like, walking through everything he's going to be asked to do in practice the next day. I mean, he's bought into his role uh, and, and uh, has earned an opportunity now to, you know, play more this season. And there's a reason we gave him the, uh, I believe it was the Spirit Award that we gave him tonight, you know, just because of that. Yep. Dad, I told him the most disappointing thing of the night was we had more punts blocked in five minutes than we've had the entire spring, which we've got to look at. So, I'll, yeah, I figured you would. So, <laughs> I knew that was coming. So, it'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that tonight at the house. But thanks, you guys, for uh, covering us all spring like you do. And appreciate your, uh, uh, the, the, what you do for our program as well. Happy Easter to everyone and look forward to seeing everybody soon. Thanks.